Casey Gray here, and on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the four different control layers, the four different barriers, which are weather barrier, vapor barrier, air barrier, and thermal barrier. And I'm gonna show you what we've done here on some of our projects here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, which is primarily considered a cold climate. Now we've been watching the comments on our videos, and this seems to be one of the areas where there's a lot of questions or confusion around what to do where and how to apply it. So we wanna make sure that we address this once again, but we have done some other videos, and if you wanna check out some of the other videos we've done, you can look at those here. First, we need to understand what we're trying to control with these barriers. So the main culprits that affect the health, comfort, and efficiency of your home are water, air, and heat, or temperature. So why do we have four barriers to worry about? Well, water is the biggest culprit we need to protect the home from. It can get into your home a few different ways. It can dump directly from the sky, and the weather barrier is what prevents this from getting in. Water can also be suspended in the air in the form of vapor, and that vapor can be carried in fairly large amounts through openings in your wall where the home isn't sealed properly, like wiring transitions or poorly sealed windows, which a well-installed air barrier prevents. And that water vapor can diffuse through the wall from either direction in smaller amounts over time, from the warmer side to the colder side where it condenses like moisture on a cold beer can, for example, which the vapor barrier helps to prevent. So as you can see, water is very tricky and can get into your house in many different forms. So we actually need three different barriers just to prevent the water from getting into your home. And that brings me to the fourth barrier, which is also important for water because of what I mentioned with, in terms of condensation. If you do not have the thermal barrier, you will get that water issue. You will have a condensation issue. And that would happen, for example, on a day like today where we have it warm inside, cold outside. If there was no insulation, the warm side of that plywood would start to condensate. So as you can see, we actually need all four barriers in order to keep water out of your home and to keep your home healthy, comfortable, and efficient. Now back to air as the culprit. There are other reasons to prevent airflow other than just moisture or water issues. Air can travel in through those same wall openings and carry pollutants, allergens, and other things you do not want in your home, as well as cold that leaks in through unsealed openings and pushes out warmer air. Heat can also be lost or gained through thermal bridges or walls without enough insulation or what we call R-value. We call this insulation a thermal barrier as it prevents unwanted heat loss and gain. So if I had to put these in order of importance, I would put them as weather first, then air, then vapor, and then thermal. However, you really need them all in order to have a healthy, comfortable, and efficient home. It's kind of like choosing the brain over the heart. You need both to live. So if you want a healthy and comfortable home, you need to have all of those things incorporated into your design. So where do we put all of these barriers within our assembly for our homes? In all areas, the weather barrier is going to be on the exterior of the home. Proper siding, house wrap, or exterior insulation, roofing soffits, and water drainage are going to protect your home from that bulk water falling from the sky. On this particular project that you're looking at, we are using the Adhero peel and stick weather and air barrier as our actual weather barrier. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated because some products can be used for more than just one barrier. As you heard me just say, we're using the Adhero as our weather and air barrier that's possible for other products as well. So I'm gonna break it down though, I'll break it down by per barrier and I'll let you know what we're using for each one of those barriers. The air barrier can go on the interior or the exterior of the home. Where you place it to create a continuous air barrier often depends on the design and the wall assembly that you're using and figuring out how to connect it from your foundation all the way up to your roof. Like the human body, you don't breathe directly through your skin, you breathe through your lungs. In the case of a home, the lungs would be your ventilation system, and we wanna keep the air from bringing vapor pollutants and cold into the home through the openings in the building envelope we talked about before. This is why air sealing details are crucial when it comes to building a high performance home. Now on to vapor. Just like the human body, 
Our skin, for example, can absorb or lose moisture. Our wall assemblies in our homes can do the same. Moisture can even diffuse right through drywall from the inside of the home in surprising amounts. In Canada, this is why we put the vapor barrier on the interior of the wall assembly to prevent hot, humid air from living and cooking inside the home from moving through the drywall and condensing in the colder wall components. In a warmer climate with the heat outside and the AC running on the interior of the home, it would be a good idea for you to put the vapor barrier on the exterior of the wall assembly. Now you could be thinking, Casey, but you live in Ottawa, you have hot summers, hot humid summers and cold winters. So doesn't that mean that the vapor barrier is on the wrong side in the summer months? And the answer is technically yes, it is on the wrong side, but we cannot put a vapor barrier on both sides. But that is why we like here at The Conscious Builder, like to build our wall assemblies to be permeable if it's possible for the project and depending on what the goals are. That means that if vapor gets into the wall assembly, which it will somehow at some point, does it have the ability to dry? The thicker the wall assembly, the more important it is to think about these things. So if you have a thin wall assembly, it's normally not a big deal. It'll dry towards one side or the other, whichever way it can. However, if you wanna make an entire wall assembly permeable, then you need to use products that are permeable, meaning like you sweat through your skin, your wall will also be able to sweat. You won't see it, but it'll be able to dry towards the inside or the outside. And now, luckily, we live in a time when there are smart vapor barriers, meaning there are vapor barriers that will allow vapor to travel through it depending on the pressure that's being put on it. So you could put a smart vapor barrier on the inside of your wall assembly, and if there's moisture built up and there's heat driving, it'll actually drive it towards the interior, but it can also drive it towards the exterior if need be. One of the products that we use a lot on our projects is the Intello Plus, and this can also be used as the air barrier as most vapor barriers, but we're not necessarily using that here on this wall assembly. Finally, we are on to the thermal barrier, which is the insulation in our wall assembly. Now this can be installed in different areas of the wall assembly, but it can also be done in a way to eliminate thermal bridges. A thermal bridge is really anything that has a high conductivity. So that would be things like concrete floors or concrete walls, balconies, steel beams, anything that goes from the exterior to the interior. So even a wood stud would be a thermal bridge. On this home, we are using rock wool products and we're using two different products. We are using the Comfort Bat, which goes in between the studs and that will come in different R values. It depends on your wall thickness. And the, then we are using the Comfort Board IS80 on the exterior to get rid of the thermal bridges. And once again, this will come in different thicknesses to give you different R values, depending on what your goals are. So if your project does require a thick wall, if you're getting into a high performance home and you're looking to build a healthy, comfortable, efficient home that's gonna stand the test of time, make sure that you work with professionals that understand building science that can help you work through what's best for your wall assembly and for your project. A big thanks to Warmboard, who is the sponsor of this video. Warmboard is the premier whole home radiant floor heating solution in North America. Their best in class award winning panels promise greater comfort, performance, and energy savings. The Warmboard comfort system offers faster response times, easier installations, lower energy use, and unparalleled comfort. If you're looking for radiant floor heating solutions, check out warmboard.com or click on the link in the video description below.